Hey ladies and gentlemen, it's Professor Williams here and we're going to look at decision theory today. So decision theory is um, a statistical uh, process that involves the procedures for choosing and making the optimal or best decisions in the face of an uncertain future. And in the simplest of all scenarios, a decision maker is going to have to choose the one best alternative from a finite set of alternatives. And what's going to happen is, is they're going to make this decision and in the future there will be two or more possible states of nature or conditions that will exist. What we know about states of nature is only one state of nature can occur. What we also know is that we can look at our decision alternative and a potential state of nature and determine what our payoff or outcome will be. Payoffs, remember, can be positive, they can be negative, they can be big, or they can be small. Let's think about the components for a moment that make up this decision theory. First, we have decision alternatives. My alternatives are opening a small, medium, or large hot dog stand here on the Outer Banks this summer. These are the only options or choices that I have. I've identified all of my possible alternatives as the starting point for my decision. And I also know that my alternatives are independent mutually exclusive and collectively exhaustive. In other words, if I open a small stand, I can't also open a large stand and that opening a medium stand is independent of opening small or large. So now I have my decision alternatives. Now I have to look at my state of nature. Well, these are any conditions in nature or in the universe that can occur after I've made my decision. And these conditions affect my outcome and they could affect my outcome in a positive, negative, or even a neutral way. The key is I do not control the states of nature. In my case, states of nature are tourist traffic. So tourist traffic on the Outer Banks this summer could be lower than last year the same as last year, it could increase a little or it could increase a lot. Those are the four possible conditions or states of nature that will exist. I can't control it at all. What happens though is that given my three decision alternatives, small, medium, large, and four different states of nature, for each combination of decision and state of nature, there's going to be a payoff or a reward for that decision alternative. And payoffs can range in size and in some instances may actually be a loss. The way that we look at these decision making components is in a payoff table. I have my decision alternatives. I've already got two of them penciled in. So decision alternative one is I open a small stand. Decision two is a medium. Decision three is a large. My states of nature, remember I said I could have less tourist traffic. I could have the same as last year. I could have an increase or I could have a big increase. So let's say that I decide to make, to open a small stand. In, given my decision to make a small stand and the state of nature of a small increase at the intersection of my decision alternative and my state of nature will be my payoff. So it is some amount of money that I will make if I open a small stand and tourist traffic increases some. 
So let's say my decision, I made the decision to open a large stand and state of nature 2, which is tourist traffic, was the same occurred. Then what I know is that the intersection of my state of nature and my decision alternative, this will be the payoff that I get for having made the decision to open a large stand. So what are the goals and the conditions for decision making? Well, decision theory really helps businesses achieve one of three goals. They either can maximize their return, in other words, make as much money as humanly possible. From a more pessimistic approach, it allows them to minimize their losses. In other words, if they need to make the decision, but none of the decision alternatives are really wildly profitable, we can use decision theory to help them minimize their loss. And then another um, goal that we talk about in decision theory is this idea of minimizing regret. And so when we talk about regret, we're simply saying, how much am I going to regret having made the wrong decision? And so we're able to minimize how sorry we are that we made decision A and not decision B. The other thing that we're going to look at is decisions under three different conditions. So the first is decision making under certainty. This is a very theoretical approach because it assumes that we have some kind of crystal ball and we can look into the future and know exactly what the world is going to look like. And if we knew what the world was going to look like a year from now, we would make the decision today that would maximize our return a year in the future. What's much more likely is that we make decisions under uncertainty. In other words, we know that there are a lot of possible ways the world can look a year from now, and we make our decisions based on that degree of, of uncertainty. Finally, we'll look at decision-making under risk. And what decision-making under risk simply says is we have been able to predict the probability of a given state of nature occurring. And so, you know, how risk-averse are you? Um, some decision-makers will elect to make the decision with a high payoff even though it has a low probability of occurrence. People who are risk averse will take a lower payoff with a high degree of certainty. So we'll look at decision making primarily in the world of uncertainty and under risk. I hope this helps give you an overview of decision theory and I will see you guys um, next time.